Hello. <laughs> um, uh, two years ago, the following thought came across my mind. What would happen if someone from the other side of the world uh, draw a map of the world without looking to an existing web? And I knew in my mind what my world looked like, but what did the world look like to other people? So I started to ask people from all over the world to draw a map of the world uh, from memory. Uh, so first of all, I went to Schiphol Airport and asked travelers. Later, I asked people when I was traveling myself, or people I just met. And I collected uh, hundreds of maps from all over the world, from the UK to Canada, from Afghanistan to Africa. And the results that I received were quite remarkable. Um, I didn't expect this at all. Um, so I started to analyze these different world views. So this is the first two maps I would like to show. And they, these maps are clearly not made by an African, because Africa was the most overlooked continent when it came to drawing. And it happened quite often, and it's strange because it almost covers the biggest surface in the world. Um, I think large parts of Africa could be considered in terms of black holes, uh, areas that are not connected to the World Wide Web or have an implement infrastructure. So in a way, it is not part of the world, at least not for these people. And another map is this map. This is uh, made by a woman from Afghanistan. And in the first place, she didn't want to participate. Apparently, she was ashamed that she could only draw her own country. Um, but in the end, I convinced her to draw the things that she knew. And then she made me this beautiful map of her own world. And she could draw her own country to perfection with every mountain, every sacred place, and even the height of mountains. Um, speaking about mountains, something else what I discovered is that people who live in mountainous areas uh, know how to draw all the mountains in the world. Uh, <laughs> something where Dutch people have difficulty with. <laughs> uh, yeah, the drawings are no, in no way correct re representation of the world, but they do represent the world of the person who drew the picture. Um, the maps are like vehicles to tell different stories. And in the end, I was only mediated to collect all these different stories. I didn't make them. Um, and through the process of drawing without guides, people are faced with their own view of the world. And some of them started totally convinced, only to be faced with the limits of their knowledge. Um, uh, let's go to the next one. Yeah, some of the conversations were very interesting as well. People were telling me stories whilst they were drawing. Um, and I still have the original note from a man I met. And he had the following explanation when he made this map. Uh, I believe the Netherlands are below Suriname although it snows in the Netherlands and not in Suriname. So the ice water comes down, so the Netherlands should be above Suriname. <laughs> yeah. And this is another amazing response. Yeah. And we can laugh about it, but it's so true, because the map shows us that there are infinite representations of the world, and that they are all true because they have been established within the individual's own logic. Uh, some other examples of a certain logic. This, where Australia is in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Or this. <laughs> um, this is like a map of Vietnam. But she only knew that it has an S shape. And this. <laughs> and if you look at this map and you think about traveling, uh, hundreds of years ago it would have taken us months to get to the other side of the world. And now it is completed in a day. And through the internet, we are continuously connected to the entire world. As such, we don't have to keep information about countries in between. Uh, it so happens that we live in a globalized world. But at the same time, by use of air travel, we have a highly fragmented worldview. Um, this is the final map I would like to show. And this is a man I met. And he came to the Netherlands as a refugee from Somalia. And when he was drawing the map, he was really confused about where Europe should be, as you can see. Um, and later, when I looked back at the map that he made, I realized something, or I guess I realized something. Uh, probably the boat that he took when he came from Somalia to Europe continuously sailed straight ahead. Uh, so it would be very logical for him to think that uh, Europe lies across Somalia. Um, yeah, I think the maps are not so much a collection of failed maps, but rather a collection of highly individual life paths. Um, 
the maps open a lot of different questions about knowledge production. Uh, how do we collect knowledge? What knowledge is relevant? How do we learn? Uh, how do we learn to see the world? And do we understand the world if we draw a correct map? And there are all sorts of reasons why people have drawn the maps the way they have. And I can only speculate on that, on why they have. Um, but for me, uh, the maps are really like treasure maps, which we find the most wonderful winding roads of the human brain. Thank you. <laughs>